Welcome to the Alabama Bass Trail Podcast, brought to you by Phoenix Boats. Now, here are your hosts, Alabama Bass Trail Program Director, Kay Donaldson. Welcome into the Alabama Bass Trail Podcast presented by Phoenix Boats. I'm Kay Donaldson, the director of the Alabama Bass Trail and your host for this week's podcast. Um, guys, it has been a whirlwind of a week at Smith Lake. I mean, great tournament. Uh, really, really, um, guys, they caught them. They just flat caught them. Not going to be able to have the guest on today that won the Smith Lake tournament. They had some uh, prior commitments and and unable to be with me today, but I am going to talk a lot about the Smith Lake tournament and then, uh, you know, kind of give you some stats and things like that and talk about things going on in the Alabama Bass Trail. Uh, cover the AOI uh, picture that we're looking at right now and North versus South. So, we're going to talk a lot of things Alabama Bass Trail today, and, and the reason I keep looking to my left, I want to go ahead and let you know that is, for some reason, both of my printers don't want to connect today, so I'm unable to print my notes out, so I'm actually looking to my left to kind of see uh, what's what I have on tap and, and to kind of keep me on track so that I don't ramble on and on and on and on. But uh, anyway, uh, they, uh, the winners, Craig Grubbs, Matt Ferguson, they finished with a 20.6, I mean, I'm sorry, 20.26 weight at Smith Lake, as well as they had a 7.01 largemouth. I mean, that's a Gunnersville bass. That's a Wheeler Lake bass. That's a Pickwick bass. That's what you normally see there. You don't normally see a seven pound largemouth at Smith Lake, but we saw it on, on Saturday. So really cool tournament. Uh, Gosh, I can't even say enough about the volunteers. Linda Lewis, the whole Chamber of Commerce of Walker County, uh, very small staff, but their volunteers show up in a big way. She calls them the voluntolds, or maybe that's just Ray that she calls the voluntold. Ray Lewis is her husband and not the Ray Lewis that you're thinking, not the football player. He looks nothing like that. He's a very small man, but... Absolutely. The hardest working people and working so hard for their community. I mean, I just can't get over the help. And then Bo was there cooking the whole time and and uh, it smelled good all day. And then when the fish started coming in at three o'clock for weigh in, they freaking caught them. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, I will say next week we'll have Craig and Matt on. They've been fishing the trail for quite some time. They've done really well. I think they've got a couple of second places, maybe even one or two third place finishes uh, and some others. They finished in the top nine once before to go to the Bassmaster Team Championship. He mentioned that as their goal this year is to make it back there, uh, but been fishing with us a long time and to get their first win and to be a brand new winner on the Alabama Bass Trail was a really cool thing for them. So excited for them. But let's talk about the numbers. 225 teams paid for this event back in August. Uh, 220 teams fished this event. 217 teams weighed in, weighed one or more bass. Now, you say that's a lot, and it is. This is the second tournament of the year. They're going to weigh in. Even if they had unders, they're going to weigh in. They need these points to get to the championship. So 217 teams weighed in, 196 limits. Uh, you may recall we had 218 limits at Lake Martin. So still a great number of limits at Smith Lake. Uh, 1,049 bass weighed in. 1,044 bass went back into the resource. Uh, several of those came to us in not great shape. Um, uh, so we did release 1,044 back into the resource. Uh, 241 largemouth, 808 spotted bass. Uh, winning weight again, 20.26 with a 7.01 largemouth bass in that bag. Uh, we counted nine fish over five pounds. Uh, we keep all of those statistics for the state of Alabama, uh, and we turn all of that in. It's the bait report that we do for the state of Alabama. So all in all, I mean, a fantastic tournament. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other guys that were in that, uh, you know, in the tournament that finished up in the in the top but I think if you take a look at the standings overall, you're going to see that there are a number of teams sitting inside that top nine that haven't lived there before. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I'm going to get to the Smith Lake results because I think it's very important. 20.26 won the tournament. And then if you scroll down and you look at 40th place, it took almost 13 pounds to get a check, 12.65 uh, to get a check. So 
and actually there was a tie for 40th place. The uh, what well, we thought we would see a lot of the 14, 15 pound bags, and we did. I mean, there's one. There's only three 15 pound bags. Where you saw the big number was between that 11 and 12 pound uh, bag at Lake Martin. It's seven to nine pounds. Here it was 11 to 11 to 13 pounds. Really was the majority of the field that weighed in. So. Uh, with that being said, the lake is in great shape. I don't know if you've listened to a lot of the um, uh, live feed from us as well as the uh, live feed from MLF this past weekend from Redcrest talking about this significant amount of bait in the water. Uh, that was one of the overwhelming comments at Redcrest this past week on Lay Lake was just the amount of shad that was in the water. Uh, the bait fish is is just crazy in our lakes right now. Uh, we've heard that already at Martin when we were there two weeks ago. Um, we heard that this week at, at Smith. The the herring are just so plentiful in that lake. So um, it the guys at Lay Lake just could not can, could not stop talking about the health of that lake and and the massive spotted bass that they found there and the amount of bait that's in that in that water. So. Uh, props to uh, Lay Lake. It looks like it's going to be a good year there. We've already seen really good weights there. Um, and I heard yesterday, and I, I don't have the the stats pulled up, and I'll try to find that before we get off the, the podcast. But uh, I do know that there was a Sylacauga Marine Trail tournament over at Lake Jordan yesterday, and I think they had two 21-pound bags weighed in. So uh, that lake is still pumping out great numbers as well. Um, so it's going to be a, a, you know, Sounds like fishing around the state of Alabama is going to do really well um, this this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'll see if I can find the results of the Silicaga Marine Trail that was on Jordan yesterday. I'll see if I can find that. Um, top 10 at Lake Jordan. Here it is. Chance Perry, Anderson, Casey, 2164. Second place, Austin Post, Brent Post, 2110. Third place, uh, Ethan and Shannon King. Surprise, 1901. Uh, fourth place, Daryl Crenshaw, Timmy Williamson, 1867. Fifth place, Tim Hatcher, Shane Underwood, 1788. Sixth place, Richie Ingram, Brent Reeves, 1753. Uh, seventh place, Ronnie Mc McDonough and John Cook, 1746. Taylor Luna was in eighth place, Solo with 1724. And uh, Tim Hurst, Alan Glasgow, 1640 in ninth place. And 10th place, Brad Jones, Philip Edwards was 1631. So uh, really good weights for that lake. I don't know how many boats they had, uh, but they usually have somewhere between 100 and 120 boats. So probably a really good tournament there on, um, on uh, Lake Jordan. So fishing around the state of Alabama, like I said, you got a chance to see Red Crest last week on uh, live. Uh, coverage. You got to see a lot of uh, Alabama guys do really, really well. We're going to talk about Red Crest in just a little bit, but I do want to look at the Angler of the Year race as it's setting up in the North. Again, we've only had two tournaments, but there are some names here that we don't see as often. Uh, first place, uh, you you kind of always see these guys in the top nine, uh, but they are Damian Willis, Tyler Kiker, currently leading the Angler of the Year race with 440 points. Uh, they've had two really, really good starts. Uh, we're going to talk about what they have ahead of them uh, in just a minute. Second place, Ryan Anaya and Fisher Anaya. They have 436 points. Third place, Stephen McAvoy, Josh Butts with 428. Fourth place, and I think this is where they finished last year, Justin Bussing, Ben Webb. Uh, those guys, last year was first year fishing the trail, did extremely well finishing in the top nine and uh, have had a really strong year so far this year. Fifth place, your winners from Smith Lake, Craig Grubbs and Matt Ferguson. Uh, they have 415 points. There is a tie for sixth place. Uh, that would be Dylan Tucker and Greg Tucker with 414 points, as well as Ron Cameron and Stephen Wood. I believe this might be their first year fishing with us. If not, it's the first or second year. Um, eighth place, Mark Condren, Ted Paisley. They have 408 points. And in ninth place, uh, you have Greg and Jeremy Tomlin with 400 points. Those guys have made the, the Bass Team Championship before. The names that stuck out to me are um, Ryan and Fisher. That is a father-son team, a high school team uh, that have done really well. Fisher's had a phenomenal year, not only fishing the BFLs, but the Toyota Series and a couple of other trails. Still fishes a lot of high school stuff as well. Uh, but he and his dad fished this trail, and they are currently sitting in second place, just four points behind the leader. 
Um, Dylan Tucker, Greg Tucker, a very good fishing team. That's an uncle, I think, uh, and a nephew. Ron Cameron, Stephen Wood, again, I'm not familiar with that team. Uh, I probably will get very familiar with them if they stay inside the top nine. Uh, Mark Condren is a former Angler of the Year, fishing with a different partner this year with Ted Paisley. They also fish the ABT 100s. And then, of course, Greg and Jeremy Tomlin, they're no stranger to the Alabama Bass Trail and no stranger to the top nine. They've been there before. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your current leaders, Damian and Tyler, Damian Willis, Tyler Kiker. They have a win on Wheeler Lake, uh, but Wheeler Lake's kind of been one of those lakes for them. They either do really, really well or it kicks their tails. It's not their favorite lake. Uh, they like it, but it's not their favorite lake. But you got to think with Wheeler Lake being next and then going to what I think Damien would consider maybe his home lake uh, of Neely Henry in May. Uh, they've got to be looking forward to those next two tournaments. I think if they can really stay inside that top one or two after these uh, these first these next two events, they got a really good shot of, of taking home that angler of the year. And I know they want that third win on the Alabama Bass Trail, but um, I think they would like to have that angler of the year. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, but I think, you know, Neely is kind of right in their wheelhouse. And, and when you look at Gunnersville in June, I think that is more of a crapshoot than if we had it in March, um, February or March. I think February, March, you're very much looking at those guys that can get to the bridges and will fish the bridges and they'll do really well. I think June is going to put it more as a crapshoot. Um, and, um, you know, but if they can stay inside that top three or four, and no more than 15, 20 points between them. I think they've got a really good shot of taking home the angler of the year. Um, Ryan and Fisher and Naya, first of all, Wheeler is their back door. They fish here a lot. They fish here all times of the year. Um, I have a feeling that only being four points behind in the angler of the year points, it's going to push them to do a lot more fishing on Wheeler between now and the time our tournament's there on April 27th. Um, if they have a lake that is going to be the thorn in their side, it is going to be Neely Henry. So from Damien and Tyler's perspective, they need to do better than them at Neely Henry because that is going to be the lake that they don't look forward to. They're not really excited about it. But then you get back to Gunnersville, and I got to believe those guys have a little bit of an upper hand there. The Tennessee River Fishers had a phenomenal year, has won several big tournaments, and has placed really high in the BFL, placed really high in the Toyota series. So I just got to believe that Gunnersville gives them a little bit of a, of a leg up once they get there. So I think Tyler and Damien have to stay really consistent at Wheeler, but they've got to do really well at Neely to put some distance between them in second place. That's my feeling. I have no idea how it's going to play out. So that's just my feeling as far as that goes. Uh, Stephen and Josh, uh, Stephen McAvoy, Josh Butts, they've done well at Wheeler before. Uh, they have two wins at Gunnersville, not in June, but they have two wins there. And uh, traditionally, you know, they've, they've stumbled on Neely. So I think they have to stay uh, decent in the points at, at Wheeler. Um, I think they've got to make up some ground at Neely. And then Gunnersville again, they've got two wins there, but it's not going to be a bridge tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see how they can do uh, with the next three tournaments. Um, but it sets up really well for them to be in the position they're in right now. I think this season just sets up really well for that team. Um, I do think when you look at the top nine, there is a significant dis difference, especially those in the past couple of years. You know, McKegg and Hurst, they're sitting in 26th after two spots. Uh, Kellett and Gossett, you know, they were leading after the first tournament. They stayed pretty much in the top nine all year. Uh, they are currently sitting 33rd in the points. Um, don't let that fool you. Those guys did really well at Wheeler last year, and then they're going to Neely Henry, which is what both of them consider their home lake, but they stumbled there last year. Worst tournament they had last year was at Neely Henry, and then turn around and go to Gunnersville. I just tell you, Gunnersville in June is just a crapshoot. We saw um, our on the water analyst, Darian Craig, and uh, his partner, uh, Houston Calvert, win there and had zero hope of getting in the championship without winning and came in and brought like a 27, maybe even a dirty 30. It was a dirty 30 uh, to the scales in Gunnersville on, in June. So yeah, I mean, that lake is just going to be one of those that's going to be a crapshoot. Uh, it could really shake things up at the end of the season. 
Um, and then you've got uh, Wesley Sams and Craig Daniels. They fished apart several years, but they're fishing together this year. They're currently sitting 41st in the points. Now, that's not to say that you can't overcome that. You can. We've seen people jump 80 spots in one tournament. It's, it's really going to depend on, you know, weather for one. And, uh, you know, boat number rotation is going to be key to some of these lakes as well. I cannot tell you what those guys' boat numbers are going to be. I think um, Damien and Tyler were like boat 196, I believe, at Smith. So they'll go forward 45 spots. Uh, so they'll, they're they're going to be somewhere in that 25 to 15 to 25, probably. So they're going to be in the first flight at Wheeler. Um which might be a good thing. I, I don't know. It just really is going to depend on where the fish are during that time frame. Uh, will they be still out, uh, still spawning, or will they already have gone back out uh, to deeper water? So it's going to be real interesting. Uh, the water should be up. We should be at full pool by the end. Normally tax days a day that Wheeler gets to full pool. Um, so we will be at full pool when we get here on uh, April the 27th. So going to be an interesting tournament. I think Wheeler is going to be the one that is going to set uh, some people apart. Um, just because the boat number rotation, I think it's going to be very, very, very important once they get to Wheeler. Also, let's see here. Um, let's talk a little bit about the AOI race, uh, North versus South. Currently, the South has an advantage over them in that they have won more overall anglers of the year. Um, I th want to say it's like six to four, uh, with the South and the North, uh, South having more wins. Currently, right now in the North, the Angler of the Year points leader has 440 points, and it's 400 points in ninth place. The South, the leaders, uh, Lucas, Lindsay, and Brendan Holt, they currently have 447 points. And in ninth place in the South is 415 points. So the deciding factor is who has the most points at the end of the season. Again, if we have a tie, we go and add up their weight for the total year and compare those two. We don't go to a big fish. We don't do anything like that. We add up the total weight for the year and the team that has the overall heaviest weight, that's the team that will win. And that's the way it is in in the uh, in any time that there is a tie for a place and position in the Alabama Bass Trail that's deciding. If it was the top nine, we would do the same thing. If it came down to the top 75 in points, we would do the same thing. We add up the total weight of the two teams and then whoever has the highest weight would get that spot. So that's how we do it in the Alabama Bass Trail. The only other way that we break a tie is if it's a tie for first place, and it is a one-hour fish-off. So going to be an exciting year. It started off really well for a lot of teams, a lot of new teams up in the side that top nine. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and look at the top nine in the South Division to kind of give you an idea. I know Lucas Lindsay and Brendan Holt have the um, Angler of the Year uh, first place, second place, CJ Knight, Anthony Goggins, third place, Rob Lee, Steve Winslet, not a team that you want to sleep on. Those guys know how to win Angler of the Year. They proved it this past year. I think they were in second or third place the year before. Uh, fourth place there in the South, uh, of course, had a win on Lake Martin. Mark McKegg, Tim Hurst with 430 points. Fifth place, Nicholas Turner, Joe Lay with 425 points. Uh, sixth place, again, uh, there is a tie in both the North and the South. Sixth place, Noah Godwin, Cole Godwin, 419 points. Trevor Elliott and Bo Washam, uh, they have 419 points as well. Eighth place, Tyler Malone and Cade Law, two young guys out on the Alabama Bastard South Division doing big, big things. They have 416 points. And then a team that is no surprise, they catch them. Everywhere we go, they catch them. Ryan Adams and Ryan Lloyd, 415 points. So <laughs> they have a little bit of an advantage right now. Seven-point advantage going into the third tournament. Uh, that can dissipate, uh, but it can also increase. So uh, I was going to look at what 75th place is right now. Traditionally, it takes at least 900 points to get inside the top nine to get to the Bassmaster Team Championship. And right now it is going to take 276 points is where the, the cutoff line is at 75. So um, going to be interesting to see if Damian Willis and Tyler Kiker can uh, hold out and uh, win Angler of the Year uh, and can they win overall Angler of the Year. 
A lot of things on the line for those guys. And there are some pretty big prize packages for Angler of the Year. So we'll talk about that. As it gets closer, we'll talk about what they have to, to gain as far as outside of just the points and being recognized as the Alabama Bass Trail North Anglers of the Year or the overall Anglers of the Year. So, but right now we're going to take a break. I do want to thank you for tuning in to the Alabama Bass Trail Podcast. Um, a lot of fun going on in the state of Alabama. So many tournaments going on. It's hard to keep up with all of them, but we try to report on the ones we know about, uh, especially the ones that our guys fish too. So, uh, but if you would, then we're going to take a break right quick and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you for listening to the Alabama Bass Trail Podcast presented by Phoenix Boats. Big banks only care about one thing, ROI. So when it comes to your small business, you can expect a big no. At Amfirst, we don't just invest in your business, we invest in you and your goals. With great rates on loans, lines of credit to help you grow, and business checking accounts. Because at Amfirst, business is personal. Welcome back to the Alabama Bass Row Podcast presented by Phoenix Boats. Let's talk Red Crest. I don't get into a lot of the elites and BPT and stuff. I, I don't get on um, on those topics very much. I try to uh, let them do their thing. And, and we have a ton of guys from Alabama that fish in these pro series. And I, that's basically what I want to talk about. That and how Lay Lake really showed out this past week. Um, I had a favorite. I'm not going to hide that. I had a favorite in the field. Uh, I really wanted to see Dalton Head do really well. He is a Montevallo Falcon. As any of you who listen to this podcast know, my son graduated from Montevallo, uh, played baseball down there for four years. Our heart and souls are in Montevallo. And uh, I just see how hard that team works. I see how hard their directors work to provide that outdoor scholars program for them. And it's just really cool to see uh, a young guy be able to go up against that competition and, and be successful. And and he certainly was, um, had an amazing day. I got to watch some of the live, um, you know, I watch his dad on social media and I, I can get it. You know, my son plays college athletics and I can get it. And I understand just how excited, but also, um, having to try to keep that, keep him grounded and, and keep him focused. Um, it's a big week. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the Bassmaster Classic uh, situation when we get there. But looking at uh, the standings for Redcrest after everything was said and done, uh, a former Alabama Bass Trail angler, Dustin Cannell, uh, wins his second Redcrest. Uh, so congratulations to Dustin and his family. Also, a former Alabama Bass Trail angler, Jesse Wiggins, finished fifth. Uh, Dalton Head, of course, finished 12th. Keith Poche, 15th. Greg Vincent, who has fished the Alabama Bass Trail 100s, he finished 16th. Ryan Salzman has fished the Alabama Bass Trail. He finished 18th. Chris Lane, 27th. Justin Lucas, 37th. Mark Daniels Jr., 42nd. And then former Alabama Bass Trail angler Josh Butler finished 44th. So uh, quite a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten anglers uh, out of the, the field uh, in Alabama finished, uh, I guess, in the top 45. So really cool thing to see. Uh, it was great for Lay Lake. Um, I, I'm not sure how the expo was. I did not make it to the expo. Um, saw some clips and things from that. Uh, I will say how special it was for us to know that KVD fished his last competitive uh, professional tournament on Lay Lake, one he had won a Bassmaster Classic from. Um, he's won a lot of money in the state of Alabama at Gunnersville in the all-star events that's been there in the Bassmaster Classics. Um, and I just want to say, I mean, Sherry and Kevin are dear, dear people. I would say we're friends. We don't talk on a routine basis, but um, just really cool people um, that have done a tremendous amount for this sport. I read her um, her note on Facebook the, the night before Kevin blasted off for the last day. And if you don't understand one thing about this business, and it's whether you do it on an amateur level, whether you do it in a collegiate level, whether you do it on a professional level, you've got to have somebody have your back. You've got to have somebody in your court. And Sherry has certainly been that person for Kevin. I see it with Gerald and Leanne. I see it with Jesse and Haley. I even see it with Jordan Wiggins and Whitney Wiggins. Um, you know, you see some of the wives at some of the events and some of them are home taking care of babies. Caden Sinclair's wife came out this past weekend. It, it really is a team. Um, not just the two guys on the boat. 
with the two families that are back home. Uh, when I see Roger Sams come out supporting Wesley, when I see him watching live and he's cheering on Wesley, it really is a team. And uh, that was no more evident than when Sherry wrote the words that she wrote to Kevin and and how she was um, just in awe of, of the work that he's put in to provide for their family and the life that he's provided for them and the success that he's had. And, and I thought that was really special. And I wish them nothing but the best. I know he's going on to make his own TV show, which I know he will be wildly successful at. Uh, probably one of the most consummate um, professionals that you'll ever meet in this industry. And and I'm just thankful that I got to spend a little bit of time with Sherry and Kevin uh, throughout this process. So really cool people. But as you know, uh, Red Crest is over. The Bassmaster Classic is about to begin. A lot of the anglers, I saw Scott Canterbury was leaving out, I think on Wednesday, headed to Tulsa. Their schedule is crazy. Um, if you've never been a part of the Bassmaster Classic, and I've been a part of it from the uh, host side, uh, from a, a sponsor side. Um, and it is just a crazy week. Those guys will start practice. They'll they'll have some official days of practice. I want to say it's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, maybe even Monday. And then Wednesday, they move into their hotel in downtown Tulsa. Um, Thursday is media day. Uh, the families go into the arena and they pick their seating chart where they want their seats to be each uh, family gets to pick that, and I think it goes by way of Angler of the Year points um, and how they, they figure all that, but each family gets to pick out however many seats, where they want to be in the arena, and all of that. It's a really cool event for them, uh, and then, of course, Wednesday night is uh, the Elite Night, this Angler of the Year night, um, and then they do Media Day the next day, and then Friday, fishing starts, and so does the Expo, so John, myself, Daniel will be traveling to Tulsa in three different ways. Uh, John is going to drive out. He'll have everything in the truck with him. I fly out on Wednesday, and then I think Daniel flies out on Friday to meet us. Uh, we'll be at the booth. We're in booth 2225. Don't have a clue where that's located, but we'll be there under the Fish Alabama name. We'll have all types of information about Alabama, state vacation guides, Alabama bass trail guides, uh, the new ABT 100 schedule, all the things that go with that, some free giveaway items. Uh, but come by. I'm sure you want to have your picture made with John and Daniel. They'll be there. The the two uh, tournament directors of the Alabama Bass Show, they'll be there. Maybe they can post for pictures with you and all that. But we would love for you to come by and see us. Uh, if you've ever fished the Alabama Bass Show, if you've watched our TV show, if you've watched our live, you've seen it on YouTube, come by and talk to us about it. We would love to to see you. We'd love to know your thoughts about uh, the things that we cover on live and things we cover on our TV show be a good chance for you to get to know us and us get to know you. And uh, it is by far one of our favorite shows that we go to all year. Um, one thing I learned a long time ago about the Master Classic, this is probably my 18th one to attend. People take vacation to go to the Bassmaster Classic. It's not just people from Tulsa or people from Oklahoma. I've met people from Mississippi when I was at the New Orleans uh, Bassmaster Classic. But I saw them again in Alabama. I've seen them in Greenville. They take their vacation and go. Uh, I've seen people from Texas and Alabama when it was here. I've seen the same people from Texas when I was in Greenville. So uh, it is a it is the show people take vacation to go to each year. Uh, if they are diehard fishing fans, they want to be there. Probably, I mean, I know more so than than I cast because it's not a consumer show. But it really is kind of the kickoff of the season. It really is. And so we're excited to be there. We're in about 2225. We'll be under the Fish Alabama uh, logo. So please make sure you stop by and see us. We'd love to see you. Um, lots of things going on. Uh, we don't have a tournament for a few weeks, but that don't mean we're not busy. We will be at the Bassmaster Classic. I do want to remind everybody, uh, this has been the question I've been asked most of all since we released the ABT 100 schedule uh, in March. The regular ABT schedule for 2025 will be announced on May 3rd. So that's about 45 days away. Uh, May 3rd, I think that's a Friday. It'll be announced around 10 o'clock that morning. Everything will be on the website. It'll be on social media. Um, everything stays the same. There's no entry fee increases, anything like that. We'll stay with the same payout from this year. We'll stay with the same entry fees. Same dates, August 1st through the 14th is priority registration. And new team registration will start August the 15th at 5.30 a.m., um that is that I mean that's how it that's how it is um nothing you know I think it's 149 days away for registration so uh, there will be lots of videos there'll be some lives that we'll do that'll talk about registration talk about what you need for registration 
um, it, and it is a deal. I mean, it's 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 a process to get through it. So uh, please make sure that you watch those, that you're looking at social media. If you haven't subscribed to our social media, make sure that you do that on Facebook and Instagram. That's where you'll find most of the information without having to dive through the website. So, um, and if those of you who have not seen the ABT 100 schedule, it did come out a couple weeks ago. We will be going to Lake Gunnersville in January. I think it's January the 18th. We will then be going uh, to Lake Eufaula on June the 7th. And then we will be going to Wilson Lake, a lake we've never been to on the Alabama Bass Trail on November, I believe it is the 1st. So um, going to be a fun time. Uh, Wilson Lake is a fun, fun body of water. Lots of smallmouth bass on that water. Going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about that. We'll be going out of the waterfront area there in Shoal Creek. So looking forward to that. Um, but you do have a few days, I think, uh, registration opens for that for new teams in about 84 days on June the 11th. So, but let's talk about next up on the Alabama Bass Trail, Lake Martin. It's in the South Division. Uh, I can't, I, I can't say enough about Lake Martin. What we've seen from that lake before, lots of limits. You're going to see a lot of bass weighed in. Third tournament of the year, really deciding factor for a lot of teams. They really need to do good there um, to be able to ensure themselves inside that top 75. So you're going to see that. You're going to see a lot of limits weighed in. You can just bet that. We have seen a bag this year of 27 pounds weighed in on Logan Martin. Will we see that with 225 boats? I highly doubt it. Do I think we could see 22, 23? Certainly I do. Uh, we're going to be there at a time that it could be, they could be spawning at that time. And I feel like in Alabama, we have several waves of spawn. So I do think we're going to see some people sight fishing there. Uh, but I do think you're still going to see some forward facing sonar done as well. Um, I will say that Smith Lake was not one on forward facing sonar. I'll just give you a little preview of next week's podcast. It was not one on forward facing sonar. Um, but we have a, a couple of weeks to then. I think you're going to see a lot of fish come across the scales. Um, I think that the lake is going to be just, I think it's going to pump out some some really nice bags. I think that's where you're going to see a ton of those 13 to 15 pound bags is going to be at Logan Martin. Um, going to be a real fun time. And hey, if you're going there, whether you're going fishing, whether you're just going, I highly, highly, highly recommend the stillery. Not distillery, but the stillery. Great food, cold drinks, great entertainment, cool atmosphere. I bet that place is a buzz in the summertime. So make sure that you look into that. And also Angler's Points where I stayed back at the 100. Uh, I think that's where I'm staying again. It's right there by the ramp. They have lamping opportunities. They have the, the cottages. They have the houses. And it's right there by the ramp. So convenient. Just easy navigation. Really cool place to be. It's, it's not inexpensive. So I'm not saying it's inexpensive. I'm just saying it's a great place to stay if you're looking for convenience, ease of parking, not worried about getting stuck at a hotel where you can't get out, not having to unhook your boat. I think, you know, it it works out. It was a great place for me to stay and I was thankful to be there. Um, also, I want to talk a little bit about Wheeler Lake. That's our next upcoming tournament on the North Division. 67,000 acres. Uh, it's going to be April 27th. I think we will be postponed by that time just simply because we will have had stable water for 12 to 15 days by then. I do think that it, we're going to be post uh could be really, really good. I think you're going to see fish caught a lot of different ways. I think anywhere from a 26 to a 28 pound bag could win. I don't know that we would see a, a dirty 30, but I do think that, that 26 to 28 is possible. Going to really depend on the weather that we get leading up to that event. If we stay warm and the water stays stable, I think it could be a a really fun tournament. I would love to see 150, 160 limits weighed in here at Wheeler. It'd be really cool. I think it can happen too. I will talk a lot more about Wheeler Lake and the restaurants to go to and breweries to go to and things like that once we get a little closer to Decatur. I certainly don't want to take any of the limelight away from Logan Martin because there are a lot of fun places there to go and, and you know, have dinner and lunch and different things. So, We'll be focused more on Logan Martin the closer it gets to us. We're going to really focus on the Smith Lake Tournament next week when we have the guest on. Um, and then I uh, may have a little surprise guest for you next week. You never know with me. You never know with me. Uh, but I do want to give you your UAB baseball update before we get out of here. Um, a lot of you come up to me at the tournaments and, and even some send me messages between tournaments wanting to know how UAB baseball is doing. 
Uh, they are currently 10 and 9, a uh, season average of 526. We still have a bit of work to do in our bullpen. It tends to be our uh, Achilles heel at times. They performed really, really well this weekend. The starting pitchers did really well. The bullpen came in and did did not uh, have any major hiccups, so it was really good to see. The bats were hot. They did what they needed to do, so that was fun. Uh, we got our first sweep of the year, and I would have to go back and check last year, but I think they didn't have a sweep last year, so we won all three games this weekend. We played um, Lindenwood University out of Missouri, and uh, we got the sweep there. So really uh, a, a good weekend, a good weekend leading into conference play. We have Troy University on Tuesday night as you're listening to this podcast on Tuesday. So we take on Troy, which is a really good Troy team. I think they advanced to the uh, regionals last year. Uh, I've got to see them play against Auburn this year. They're a really, really good team, uh, one through nine. I mean, they're really solid. Uh, for Jake, he is uh, still having a pretty good year. He's hitting around 300. Uh, he's been alternating a little bit between first base and uh, catching over the past week. Uh, the other two catchers were injured. They've come back. Uh, they're catching a good bit. Jake's playing first base. I think probably Sunday was the most solid defensive game that Jake has played in a while. I mean, it was so much fun to watch. He is the quarterback of that team, and it, he put that team on his shoulder Sunday, and he just played his heart out, and it was great to see. Um, I absolutely love to watch him back there. I'm a little nervous when he gets on first base, but he just had the game of his life on on Sunday defensively. Uh, he has had better offensive games, but defensively, I felt like he was as solid as he could ever be uh, behind the plate on Sunday. It was really cool to watch. Um so that does it for your UAB uh, wrap up. They uh, they will have Troy in home on Tuesday night. They start, I think they play at four o'clock and then they welcome Wichita State to Birmingham this weekend for their first in-conference game. So uh, that's the ones that are important. That's the ones that's going to get us to the tournament at the end of the year. And uh, I hope the guys are ready. Hope they get some uh, rest and get ready because it's going to be a long next three or four weeks. So Looking forward to it. Um, I know that you probably were hoping to hear from the winners from Smith Lake. I apologize they couldn't be on. Certainly families first, and they both had family that needed them today and made them unavailable to talk with us. So um, just please keep their families in your prayers. I know one of them, um, I think a wife was having a little bit of surgery. So make sure that you keep them in your prayers. Um, it is, a, you know, we always want to do family first. So uh, just keep them in your prayers. But that does it for this week's podcast. Again, I do want to congratulate Craig Grubbs and Matt Ferguson on their win on Smith Lake. They've been fishing with us a while. They've been looking for this for this win for a while. They took home over $28,000 for a one-day tournament and a $320 entry fee. I'm going to say that again, $320 entry fee. That is unheard of in our industry. Uh, $160 piece. They took home $28,000. I believe it was $28,800. Um, and a pretty impressive performance by them. They dropped uh, that bag early on the scales. Uh, and then Steve JQ's Hughes and, J and Jordan Wiggins came in with 20.03. When they escaped the Wiggins and then Sam's came in and had, uh, I think, 18 pounds or whatever, they could breathe a little bit easier but we'll talk about that when we talk to them but I do want to thank y'all for listening I do hope you will subscribe rate and review the podcast on your favorite podcasting app and if you're watching on YouTube drop us a comment tell us a topic you would like for us to cover uh, so maybe someone you would like for us to interview in, in the fishing industry whether it be from a sponsor perspective whether it be another angler um, you know someone who's no longer in the industry that was in the industry. We'll try our best to get in touch with them. We want to cover the things that you want to hear about. And uh, we're certainly, we have weeks between tournaments where we don't necessarily have a winner on. If you would like to for us to cover a topic, we would love to, to do that for you. So please drop a comment. Let us know what you would like to hear about, people you would like for us to um, interview. We'd be happy to do that. Uh, really appreciate all of the kind words that we've received about the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks everyone for tuning in on Saturday mornings for live. I think one of the best comments we got on Saturday was there was way more people watching this and was watching Redcrest. 
So I took that as a compliment. So I appreciate y'all. Uh, I do hope you'll get out and enjoy the great state of Alabama. And y'all, as always, God bless. Good fishing. Go Blazers. And as Big Daddy would always say, get outdoors. Thanks for listening to the Alabama Bass Trail Podcast. To learn more about the Alabama Bass Trail, make sure and visit alabamabasstrail.org.